afternoon. Happy Wednesday, hump day. Um, I'm glad we serve a risen Savior, and I hope everyone is having a good week. I'm thankful that we serve a faithful God. Uh, tonight we want to pray for uh, the Ash family. Um, a gentleman had surgery and having complications, and one of our own faithful Erling Boyette, she's um, her boy. She's having some complications, and we need to pray for her that God will take care of her situation. And if you have any requests, you can put them in the comments below, or you can contact the church, and we will be happy to pray for those. Um, tonight, we're going to sing a little bit about how great God is, and I'm so thankful that He does all things well. Um, if anybody knows me well, or probably don't have to know me well, um, I love to bake and I love to cook and I read something in a book a while back about, you know, sometimes say when God is working on a situation in our life, we may want to get in a hurry and just think, you know what, I don't want to wait, I'm impatient, but in baking a cake, what if you just sat down and thought, okay, I'm not going to go through this whole, pro whole process, let's just eat some raw eggs or let's just take a bite of this flour. It tastes terrible. All of those are terrible by themselves. Maybe except the sugar. But um, but just think when it's all put together and put together right, it makes a wonderful, delicious cake or dessert. And if we can just trust God with whatever He's doing in our lives, He does all things well. So let's just be patient and let Him do what He would like to do. Water you turned into wine
just feel the power of His presence and just so thankful for all that God does for us and and uh, this Wednesday after Resurrection Sunday and, and uh, what a good week it's been thus far. Welcome to our TFC family and of course to all of our Facebook Live family and we count you a part of our family and, and so thank you. Thank you for being here with us tonight and uh, and uh, on what uh, Sister Jeannie uh, Ratcliffe said here a few weeks ago, what seems to be 385 days of quarantine already, um, it, though we know it hasn't, it's only been just a little bit of time. It just seems like it's been forever. And uh, But I have thoroughly enjoyed, I want to say thank you for sharing all your COVID-19 haircuts and, and uh, garden pictures and things that you're doing and, and I, I really, really love that and, and, and thank goodness for uh, media and, and smartphones and things of that nature that we can share pictures with one another and, and still stay connected and text and what have you uh, with our family. But man, what a party it's going to be when we can all get back together and it's not going to be that long, folks. Very excited about what the Lord uh, is doing. Thank you again for all of your giving and uh, again being able to bless people at this time. Uh, the family church has been very blessed to to by the Lord to be able to help and, and I want the church body to know that you are doing a wonderful work although you're really not here you are giving and when you give we're able to give beyond these walls to touch lives and to help people and uh, I want to thank you again if you would like to continue to give um, www. Uh, thefamilychurch.us and go to the giving tab and you can give there online if you would like to specify it for anything we, we will do that so uh, thank you again for doing all that you do I love you, I miss you but we're going to see one another soon um, we have a, a word tonight and in my mind it, <laughs> the title all just kind of ran together but we'll talk about that in a minute and it just I uh, in, in my mind, I was thinking, when life seems a mess, kind of faith. And so when everything is out of whack, we, we, you know, faith is a key component to everything that we're doing. So uh, we want to read Romans 12 and 3. Uh, we're going to be praying at the end for some of these requests, just to Marty mentioned uh, earlier. And if you would like to have your name prayed for here or every day uh, just if you will message us or 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 give us a word to um, call in and, and and just say hey here's my prayer request we would like to pray for you uh, we would like to call on your name because prayer is still the key prayer is our hotline prayer is our relationship and our communication with god so we want to pray at these times and uh, it will settle you so uh, very familiar passage of scripture as we dig into the word of the Lord tonight. It says, For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of, of faith. So basically when I was sitting down or just over the past few weeks uh, that all of this has been going on in our lives and, and of course we talk about it and we're probably tired of talking about it. Uh, it's on every media outlet. It's on every news outlet. It's everywhere but it is where we are right now and it's the life that we're in. But when it seems like a mess, when, when your life any, our country, whatever it is, seems like it's in the biggest mess it could be in. When it seems like there's a problem or, or what our nation has deemed a pandemic, so to speak. Uh, issues, in my opinion, are but the doorway or the opportunity for God to show His power and His plan. Because 
trust me, church and family, God has a bigger plan. His, his plan is bigger uh, than our mindsets at times and, and bigger than our thought processes. So uh, how can we learn to, at this time, release our faith to make a difference in our messes, so to speak, in our issues, in our problems, in our situations? And, and, and what uh, can we do maybe starting at home and growing there as individuals, as families, uh, that will eventually help us reach out beyond our homes and touch uh, our communities, our nation, our world. And so uh, our, our enemy, uh, I don't like to give kudos to the enemy or a bunch of creed to him. If you'll go and study the book of Job and all of the book of Job, uh, Job never even mentions him, never even gives him a, a how you doing or an attaboy. Uh, the devil is a liar. He's the father of them. That's what the Word of God says. And but but we do have a, an enemy that combats our spirit, uh, and uh, on a continued basis. And so, when when the enemy will test our faith, what what do we do here? How do we go about it? Through the Word of God, we are wise to his so-called testing uh, procedures, and we prepare for the test with faith. I, I believe that. I, I just believe that's how we go about it. The greatest test of faith is not just how we feel towards God, uh, uh, but, but how we feel toward our fellow man also uh, in these times. Um, one example is uh, in, in our faith is tested in, in crucibles. And I, I want to give a definition of, of what that is real quick. It's a uh, a, a ceramic or metal container in which metals or other substances may be melted or subject to very high temperatures. When we are subject to very high temperatures, it's what we're made out of uh, that will allow us to uh, incubate or, or handle these things in our life uh, through the power of the Holy Ghost and through our walk with the Lord and the faith that we have. Uh, we were formed to handle these things. We were formed and created by God to handle any heat that the enemy can bring against us. Now, fire, it will test gold, but it's adversity and patience that test us as humanity or individuals or man. Uh, Luke 17, 5, the apostles come to Jesus and, and they ask a question and, or, or they, they want him to do something for them. And uh, they, they ask him, increase our faith. Increase our faith when, when you begin to think about that. And, and then as I thought about that, really is that a fair question? Or is that a fair request, so to speak? Um, to be real honest, the apostles never needed to have an increase. They just needed to launch out and use what they already had. I mean, when something bad happens, we don't need to go on a, 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 a crash fast or a crash prayer meeting or a crash Bible reading or crash anything. It's just our little consistent times that has built these things in us that we realize that when we have these type of situations, uh, we do not have to fall apart, but we can use what is in us already, what we already have possessed from the Lord, and, and, and just put it into action. Why should He give us more faith when we can exercise and use the faith we already have. We already have faith. We, we've already been given uh, a measure, so to speak. So um, many fear tests, and, and I understand that. As, as, as long as there is life, we're going to be tested uh, no matter what. But uh, like, like the Apostle Peter, uh, we can let faith rule and we can climb out of the boat, so to speak. I realize he had an invitation from the Lord to come. 
But because he asked, Lord, bid me to come to you. And Jesus said, hey, uh, come on. You, you Just come on out here. You can do it. Yes, the Lord gave him an invitation. But when we do not have an invitation, but when we're faced instantly with an issue, I can promise you, we are not waiting on God. He is waiting on us. I can guarantee you that. See, we mostly fear what the other boat sitters are going to say about us a lot of times. Or we fear the possibility of sinking in the water and we start analytically looking at it all. But Peter is pretty exclusive because he is in very limited company as there, as far as I know, has only been two people that have walked on water, and that was him and Jesus Christ. So uh, it's not like this is something that happened on a, a consistent basis. But Romans 12 3 says this, According as God hath dealt to every man or woman the measure of faith, uh, there is a standard, a unit uh, of measurement, so to speak, of faith. There, there is all these units and measurements we have and, and this measurement and that measurement and they get larger and, and all of these things. And so God gives everyone enough faith to do what is necessary to accomplish His plan through your life. He does. I'm going to say that again. God has given each of us enough faith and will give us more but he has given us enough faith to accomplish his plan through our life. He has. Nothing will ever occur, and I mean nothing. No pandemic or any situation that comes in life that we will not have enough faith to sustain us and grow us. Just giving you some faith tonight. I'm, I'm just building your faith because inside of you, there's something very, very powerful. And, and a lot of times we look at our lives and we look at, at, at our own selves and we uh, would, would tend to be negative in our commentation toward ourselves a lot of times. There, there is some people that love to brag on themselves, but uh, you don't usually hang out with those type of people. But we're quick to want to put down on ourselves or talk uh, negatively toward ourselves. But let me encourage you to know that within you, God has seen something amazing. And before you were ever formed, God already had a plan for your life. And, and so that plan needs faith to, to make it all come to fruition or happen. Faith comes by hearing the word of the Lord and according to Romans 10 and 17. And, but we know according to James 2 and 20 and 26, faith without works or action is dead <clears throat> all by itself. So we need a mixture or a combination of these things working in our lives uh, to allow God's plan to come. See, we want to buy a CD. Uh, I guess people still buy CDs now. I don't know. We want to listen to podcasts or read a book on faith, and then all of a sudden our faith grows. That's really not how it works. It's been stated that practice makes perfect, and and, and the more we exercise our faith, the more faith we'll produce in our lives. It's a uh, much used uh, passage, but John 11 is, is, of course, a great story of, of Lazarus and his sisters. And if you would look in 21 and, and through 46, tonight, let's take a small glimpse at Martha's faith, and let's establish that Martha had a measure of faith. Martha already had a measure of faith. So we must also understand that Martha's faith is going to be tested in, in, a, in, a, in a big way. And so uh, we as the church have mostly developed bad attitude, attitudes toward testing, if you will. And, and I get it. I'm an awful test taker person. I just ain't. Like, it doesn't matter how much you study. Just I can get in there and just lock up. 
you, you, sometimes I get the mindset that we have things come against us and we just, we struggle with it. We struggle with the test. And, I, and so I, I, I want you to know up front, I understand that. But every major worker of God, you can go read the Bible, go look at it. You can look at our own, uh, uh, our own fellowship, the ministers maybe that you have looked at and you have given great and double honor to. They have all had a faith test. Jesus was even tested. Or tempted in, in, in the wilderness. So uh, Martha's faith test does not revolve uh, around her, so to speak, but it revolves around her, her brother. And so when it's somebody else that's involved, this is where we a lot of times will have major struggles. Our uh, test, though, uh, will involve most of the times the people we love. And uh, I, I don't know about you, but I hope you agree with that. If not, uh, we can talk about that on message, or you can shoot me an answer. But a lot of times, our toughest test comes um, to those that we love and that we care about so much. Watch this. Abraham's test was his son. It was his greatest test. How about the, the widow's test? It was her food. I mean, I don't know about you, but you go start messing with somebody's food and their children, <laughs> you're fixing to be in a mess. N to Naaman, it was just dipping in that old muddy river seven times. That really was his issue. Washing the mud out of the blind man's eyes was an issue because of how the mud was actually made. What will be our test? I, th I think we're in the middle of a good one right now. Um, this is a test, folks. You're not going to hear that loud beeping noise coming over a Facebook Live or anything like that or uh, on your phone right at the moment. That, that emergency noise that comes about 2 o'clock in the morning when you're sound asleep and you just come to a standing position uh, horrified because you don't even know what just went on and your heart beats 30 minutes later. You're not going to get that. But you're getting my voice saying we're in a test. We're in the middle of a faith test. Because when we're in life's mess, it's our faith that's going to help sustain us. So how, how will my faith be tested? And, <coughs> and it's, it's not always bad. It, it don't always have to be like the worst scenarios, all right? We, we don't have to try to dream up of this awful time and everything bad is going to happen. It can be something small, but your faith will be tested. But our talk tonight is let's look at Martha's faith, all right? Uh, let's look at her faith test. Martha loved Lazarus. I mean, that's her brother. Lazarus gets sick. They send for Jesus. Lazarus gets sicker. I hope that's a word. <laughs> it just sounded like it ought to go there. And, and uh, Jesus delays his coming. Lazarus dies. Lazarus stinks for four days. I, I mean, we, we got issues here. Now, that's, that, that, I don't know. I, just, if I hope I painted you a picture that looked pretty bleak there for a moment. But let's look at some of the levels of Martha's faith and how Jesus propelled Martha's faith through all of this to higher levels each time, all right? Let, let's call uh, the first level of faith, we'll call it medicine faith. Is that okay? Like Tylenol or Advil or ibuprofen or aspirin faith. Can we say it like that? Like, yeah, you know, I got a headache, let's pray. Well, let me take this aspirin first, then we'll pray. <laughs> I like to call the first level of faith medicine faith. Uh, I, by the way, I'm not against medicine, all right? I, I'm, I'm not against any doctors or nurses or none of that. Matter of fact, I pray for them and I go to them myself. We need them. But, but I want to call this kind of faith medicine faith. Uh, I, I will pray and believe for what God can do as long as it's something that, you know, aspirin or Tylenol or something like that can handle, right? That, that's usually the level of faith that's the, the limited level. And uh, in, in John 11, and you, you look at verse 21, she said, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother had not died. See, Tylenol faith depends on the presence of a super saint of God. 
Like, like, like we're not just going to call any saint of God. We're going to call the one that we feel, boy, if they pray, something is going to happen. That, that, that what I call the, the super saint or the person that we know for a fact actually prays and not just says, hey, we'll pray for you. But that actually does it. So um, Tylenol faith limits what it sees. It limits the circumstance, the feelings, the emotions, the personalities. And, and, and here's what we say a lot of times through what I call medicine faith or Tylenol or Advil faith, whatever your, your favorite store-bought stuff is. All right, watch this. When life seems a mess, this is what we do. If you had been here, Jesus... I mean, we, you know, we as a, 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 um, Americans want to tell somebody it's always somebody else's fault. Jesus, this is your fault. I am holding you personally responsible. That is exactly what Martha was doing here. Because, you know, uh, we got to blame somebody. I mean, a lot of times we can't just take uh, 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 responsibility for our actions. I mean, it had to be somebody's fault, right? And, and so this is what we do in this level of faith. We blame, and here she is, blaming Jesus of, of, of all people. See, medicine faith sees the little picture and glorifies in flesh. It never sees the big picture and the plan of God. Martha's Tylenol faith must be pushed to accept more than the responsibility to do the little or the minimum. We used to sing a song. Faith, 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 a little bit of faith. Y'all remember that? Most of y'all probably remember that song. And, uh, and, then, and then at one course in one of our long, long, long uh, revivals is what we used to call it, a series of services that lasted till you were, you were old. Um, uh, there was a guy there and he said, no, we're singing this song all wrong, we're singing Big Faith. <laughs> so, but, but in this level, you walk around singing a little bit of faith. And so let, let's not limit God's work. Let's not limit his plan. Let's move to the next level of faith, and let's talk about that in a minute. All right, this level of faith, we'll call it head faith. Um, I, I, I didn't really know what else to call it. Uh, knowledge faith, maybe we could have said that. Uh, Jesus challenges Martha here to come deeper and to fan the flame and, 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 and to kindle some faith and some hope in her life. Martha's words in 24, verse 24 says, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection. It's like we have a common knowledge of the word of God and we know some things about the word and so it's it's our knowledge about a said situation sometimes that we will we will depend on or look to. And and this is wonderful to know. There's nothing wrong with having knowledge. Get all that you can. Uh, but head knowledge is not enough faith to accomplish God's plan either because, you see, Jesus has to stretch Martha's faith past the medicine stage into this realm, so to speak, uh, of the mind where we can actually start believing something. But you see, logic and reason must be surpassed. Uh, it, it, in this realm. We, we must not just lean on logic and reason all alone. Uh, and, and that's what happens here if we only have head knowledge or knowledge of things. Jesus says, I have power over life and death. Martha, will you believe this when I tell you this? There was a, a comment here, in my opinion, to go deeper. When he told her, I am the resurrection and the life, Martha. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to you specifically right here. Now, the Bible says that Jesus wept. And, and I often wondered why Jesus cried here at this point. And the Jews said it was because Jesus loved Mary and Martha and Lazarus. And so it was emotional. And, 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 and that is true. That's biblical. That's what it says. But... Could it be that there was more to the tears than, say, emotional ties? Maybe Jesus cried because of their lack of faith. I, I'm, I can't prove it. I'm just thinking out loud with you tonight. And, and, and as I looked at this, 
Uh, Jesus saw the big picture, and he cried because his friends were leave, living beneath their privilege, so to speak. They were living far from the plan God had for them in their lives. So let, let's pray that the Lord teach us to develop our faith, but to also release our faith that his production, uh, you know, so to speak, we can become his 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 farmer's market, his fruit stand, if I can put it like that. In other words, when we start uh, producing the things that he wants for our lives, then we can start getting those things out beyond us. That is when God's plan truly is coming to fruition. Number three, last level of faith <clears throat> we're going to talk about tonight. Let's call this level of faith action faith. Uh, or, or go for it type faith that produces God's plan, all right? Jesus calls for real faith, action faith here, and he says, move the stone. He tells them, move the stone. See, the head faith tries to take back over when someone says, hey, you know, hey, man, he's been dead for four days. He probably, you know, has a little issue there. But in verse 40, Jesus speaks personally to Martha. And he said this, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. You see, Jesus knew to release action, he has to deal with her one-on-one. -on -one. And sometimes Jesus is speaking to us and he is trying to do it one-on-one. -on -one. This type of faith hinges on us. Every bit of it. It hinges on us. Right here. Watch this. Action faith moved the stone. Jesus never touched it. Alright? People did. Jesus is trying to get us to understand that with our faith, if we will put some legs on it or put some feet on it or put some hands on it and put forth some action, he will bless it as it goes forward. But sometimes even action faith can be delayed and we can become frustrated in the test of our patience. Watch this. Watch how it unfolds. Jesus gives the shout out to his friend, Lazarus, come forth. Well, just old Lazarus don't come forth. This old mummy comes walking forth. In my mind, he's all wrapped up, and this is what comes walking out of the tomb, all right? Still bound, still in grave clothes, still having restrictions, still in struggles, and then Jesus goes deeper in his faith action, and he says, now to the people, <clears throat> lose him. And you will see that Jesus has given us the word of God. Jesus has given us everything we need. And we're always praying for Jesus to do, do, do. <clears throat> but he's waiting on us. He's waiting on us to put the faith that he gave us into action and move the stone, take the, the wrap off, uh, help people in their situations and their frustrations because guess what? Somebody had to help me. Somebody had to help you. And, and in all of this, uh, in turn, when we receive help, we, we ought not hoard that help. We ought to bless others with that. Uh, the, these great things that we learn in the Word of God and we're able to teach people, but not just teach people, but do it. I mean, talk is cheap. <laughs> I've heard that, that term a lot. Uh, uh, and, and so, but, but action means something. When you actually tell somebody you're going to do something and then follow through with the plan, even if it didn't take a whole lot of faith, you had action to believe that by doing this, somebody was going to be touched. That's action faith to me. So Jesus calls for more action. Lose him. Lose him. We can not only lose people, we can lose the Lord because he said, whatever you bind on earth, hey, I'm going to bind it in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, I will loose it in heaven. So we can do these things. We have the ability to do these. Now watch this. 
Hebrews 11, 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God, number one, we, we got to understand our need for God and come to Him. We really need Him, folks. We need, we need Him, church. We, we have to have Him in our lives. And then it says, Must believe that He is. Alright? Now, we not only just believe it, Everybody believes in God. We take it even further than that. We experience God. He, he sent the apostles to an upper room where they received power from on high. We can have that same experience in our life. You can receive it at home right now on Wednesday night. As we talk, you can just begin to repent. And as you begin to repent, the Lord will begin to move on you. And as you're praying, you can begin to say things you don't understand. And we call that here speaking in other tongues. And, and that is a sign to you that something took place in your life. And so, and then it says that he is a rewarder of them. So not only must you believe he is, <clears throat> but that you're going to believe he's going to reward those that diligently seek him. So if I pray for you, then I truly believe in God is going to touch you because his word says he will by his stripes. You are healed. If we didn't believe it, and we didn't believe he was going to reward us, why do we even pray? No, it, we can't just look at logic. We have to realize that faith goes beyond our common way of thinking and steps into a place. So what level of faith do we exercise on a daily basis? If it seems our life is a mess, there's problems and there are issues, faith is what we need to release. I, I, I hope in some manner tonight this has made some kind of sense and it's kind of helped you because in this walk, in this day that we're in right now, we truly need men and women of action faith. Not just medicine faith. That's good. Not just knowing type faith. Not just a knowledge Oh, I know that God has healed before. I know the Word says X, Y, and Z. But I'm talking about faith that says we need to be reaching people at this time. We need to be reaching out to one another at this time more than any other time. And that takes faith. I'm not saying in this time run out and hug everybody, you see. I'm not saying these things. We need to have wisdom. I'm not saying just do random faith. I'm not saying if your bank account says you have no money, go and write a big check for it. That's not, that, that's, I would call that even crazy faith. I don't even know what that's called. But, but to have faith that says when we're going through a situation, I'm not going to fall apart. I'm going to fall on the rock that is higher than I. I'm going to look to Jesus. I'm going to look to the one that gives me strength and comfort, and, and he's going to help us. So I want to pray for you tonight before we leave. Uh, I, I want to pray for those requests, the Ash family, uh, Sister Boyd, who's going through uh, uh, some serious complications in her life right now. And, and we want to pray for her. And if you have any other needs right now, you, you can lay hands on yourself, lay hands on the, the part or the place that you're having problems and issues and I'm telling you begin to pray for that and speak it out let the Lord hear your voice he can read your mind but he wants to hear you and so when you begin to pray believe that he is going to reward you with what you're praying for that's action faith why because you're being obedient right now by doing what I ask you to do and so as you lay your hand on yourself or somebody close to you Let's pray and believe the Lord is going to do a work. Lord, right now in Jesus' name, we, we've talked about faith. Our, our lives in our nation, in our town, in our state, it's been just, just in an upheaval. It's panic has went through. Anxieties and fears at an all-time high. Uh, hypertension, all of these things that are plaguing our bodies, uh, diabetes and, 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 and all of these situations, Lord, that's going on in our lives that this virus is running rampant on. We bind that, Lord, in the name of Jesus and put it behind us defeated and loose the miracle of healing. 
Lord, I pray right now for those that are sick in their body. Right now they're praying, Lord, heal my body. Uh, we're, we're speaking that word of faith. We have diligently sought after you, Lord. We believe that you will reward us when we pray and ask you to. So, Lord, I'm asking you right now to look at everyone under the sound of my voice and see what they're doing. Those that are going to listen to this later on. Lord, let the Holy Ghost minister to them in a special way and heal their body. Lord, you see the finances and everything that's going on. You're able to touch them. You're able, Lord, to allow monies to come from places that they had no idea they would come from. And, and I believe that, Lord. You will, you will, you will do whatever a, a, a fish can have a coin in his mouth. Whatever it takes. Lord, I believe you can do these things to supply the need of our church family and our, our Facebook Live family and all of those that are listening. I pray, Lord, right now also for salvation. I pray that in this time that you are uh, garnishing our attention and, and, and that you are trying to move us into a place to wake us up. I'm praying, Lord, that the first thing that would be on our mind is our salvation. Am I right with the Lord? Am I at the place I need to be with Him right now? And Lord, I'm praying, if not, you hear those that are praying, that are repenting right now. The Bible says that when you hear that, you forgive them. No questions asked, no nothing, no strings attached. You forgive them. So Lord, as you forgive them, and they begin to seek after you, illuminate the Word of God. Illuminate their path. Let them see, Lord, the revelation they need to see and let them understand the things they need to understand to receive the power that you are offering to them in Jesus' name. Fill them with your presence and power and love in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, through all of the rest of, of our quarantine time that we just begin to release and lose our faith to do something great and through the power of your presence, Lord, touch lives like never before. What the enemy caused and thought was destruction, you're seeing life. I pray for all of those, Lord, that have lost their physical wherewithal and their physical life and their families. And I pray, Lord, that you would give them a peace like no other. And that you would bless them with abundant blessing. And Lord, that you would touch them in the power of your presence. And Lord, we just look to you in this time. And we release our faith to go deeper in you. In Jesus' name, praise the Lord. God bless you, family. I love you. Thinking of you and praying for you. If you need us for anything, please don't hesitate to call. We'll be checking on you. God bless you.